Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kirisho here, and now, before I do get started with this mini shot, I do want to say something. I have done other ideas involving the DC Universe, and I have brought in the Lanterns in a few of those series, the Ultraviolet one, and I believe the Kryptonian series. And I believe that's the only two I can really name off the top of my head at the moment, but this one is one I hope to kind of be centered on the Lantern cores. I'm not too sure about how most of the story might unfold, but I'm willing to experiment with a few things in my free time before I do post anything, since this idea is one that does kind of very much catch my interest. Now then, with that being said, let us get started. In a world of gods and men, in a world of magic, science, and aliens, there's a Zuku Midoriya. Normal. Human. And this, it's quite something to underestimate. Deku, whenever he was 15, he saw Superman fight Doomsday. This was quite the feat. It was terrifying. It was intense. Superheroes are real. He saw the Man of Steel fall. However, he took that monster down, sent it careening into space. And that, that was incredible. Looking up to the stars, wondering what's out there. It's something that he's done before. And that, that never went away. Deku always wondered what it was like to fly. And whenever he was 18 years old, he got a chance to. His parents, they do have quite a little bit of money. And you could call Deku the only child, spoiled. However, what he would use is... gifted. People have always told him to be careful. One day, he might do something stupid, and the actions of his consequences will come to bite him. But that didn't seem to really bother him. He just went skydiving, and that was amazing. He could feel the rush of the air, feel how intense everything was. The feeling of falling before your brain realizes it's not stopping. All of it. The adrenaline and the way whenever you land, you can't hear anything. You're just you're shouting and you're just hopped up on energy. All of that. It was nice. Incredible. And Izuku, he wanted to do more. He and his friends, they went to college. And over Deku talked about taking them out skydiving, something that he does want to do at least somewhat regularly. His friends were a little concerned. Though Deku told them, It'll be quite fine. Besides, he did pay a little bit extra, but this year he's going to go for a record. Seven miles up, 30,000 feet. And this, it does have all of them a little bit more concerned, a little bit more intrigued. Deku, he's usually a little crazy. I mean, yeah, he could be reckless and do stupid things. But he's also their buddy. He wouldn't do it himself if it was dangerous or stupid, right? At least that's what they're thinking. And Izuku talked his friends into this. And that meant quite a lot. As right now, Deku, he is talking about it. Currently him sitting on the plane as his friends are trying to shout over each other. And this does mean a lot. Deku's got a lot in his mind. How this might be. How long the fall might go for and just how small everything will look. And whenever the door does a slide open, the first thing Deku just realize is how cold it feels in here. Feeling the wind rush past and everything like that. And currently the person, they do the turn. Them telling everybody about what they're going to be doing. Since this, it's a bit more of a professional dive. The man asking Deku if he's had experience doing this before. 
to which he would nod and express about what he's done. And the man doesn't understand. Him motioning for some people to jump. In Izuku, he does go to turn to his friends, asking which one of them want to do this. And they just start Deku, who seems fearless, who's not intimidated at all. And there is where Kirishima does a step forwards. Right now, him going to be careful before he does a fall forwards. Right now, him leaping out. Before there is Matthew, who does go to jump out, as there also is then Cindy, who does go to suck in her breath, but then jump out herself. Deku following briefly afterwards. And there is where the person's staying there. They do go to smile. As of right now, Deku, he does to fall. His body is getting that sensation, the momentum building, and the speed blaring through his mind. And this, it does mean a bit. Currently, him building up more and more speed. The goggles on his head going to stick. As right now, Deku, he does then go to re-angle himself and look down. Him about to pull the cord since he's going a little too fast. However, when he does look down further, he does go to see one of his friends. Both of them have pulled the first shoot, and they are beginning to slow. But when he does go to see the third parachute, it's not deployed. And that, it does have him worried. Right now, him sitting there, falling, and getting more speed. As, right now, he does begin to move faster and faster. And that parachute still has not deployed. They're both moving fast. Very fast. And this is when Never Deku does get to realize one thing. His parachute might have failed. And this immediately does fill Deku with tons of fear. Rano him, unable to figure out what to do. If he pulls this chute, then he can save himself. Slow himself down and sit here and... No, 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 no. He's not going to pull. Then on Deku's mind. Him attempting to swallow any of the fluid in his mouth. However, it's dry. And nothing does come out. Currently, Deku going to bring his arms closer together as he does to build up more speed. Build up more momentum. Him flying fast by his two friends. And Deku, he does go to bring his hands out. Currently, him finding his friend who is flailing. Trying to to figure out what to do since the cord snapped in it it's not deploying and Izuku he does go to fly in and grab onto his friend the two rolling as they do try to regain their balance regain themselves out and Deku whenever he does grab his friend by their shoulder he does tell them asking them exactly what the hell happened and they do to hold up the strings showing Deku what happened and Izuku he does look down. They're probably about halfway down. The ground's approaching very quickly. Come on, come on. Izuku. I know, I see it. Pull. Izuku, pull. Deku's sitting there. Before he has to look at his friend. Him apologizing and doing one thing. Going to bring his hands up and going to unclip his parachute. Telling him to take his. You're crazy. Come on, dude. It's either this or I try and catch you. And I'm not going to lie. I might drop you. I'm not letting you die. The person's staring at Deku. And Deku's eyes, they're full of worry for them. Not him. He's terrified. But the idea of his friend dying because he talked him into this, he doesn't want that on his conscience. And right now Deku is trying to overcome that fear. He is going to save his friend. And right now we do have on Oa, where something does get a stir. It's already high out into space and soaring towards Earth. And the person, they do yell at Deku. As Deku does look down and see the ground closer, yelling at his friend as right now he does go to grab him telling him just to take his damn parachute. And the person, they do continue 
to try and fumble with the latches that don't work. Rhino them trying to find where the cord might be. And Deku, he does bring his hand up. Him going to hold on tightly as he looks down again, before he does dig his finger into the pack and begin tearing off this part. Rhino him looking for anything and seeing the lines, they're gone. This, no, no, this parachute was, someone sabotaged his, no, shit. Deku looking scared. However, he does grab onto his friend tightly. Rhino him yelling at him as Deku does a bring his hand up and pull the cord. His friend going to feel the massive jolt as Deku, he does feel the pain shoot through his arm. Rhino the two going to slow down quickly as Deku, he does begin to sit here. As both parachutes, he deployed. And Deku, he does begin to feel blood trail down to his wrist. His friend asking Deku about what's going on. As he does flail and kick around. And Deku does bring his other hand up. Reno him yelling at his friend to hold on. As Deku, he does bring his right hand up and grab onto one of the cords he does see. Trying to angle them both carefully. Keep them steady so he doesn't fall. And right now his arm feels on fire. However, Deku, he does try to keep his self-focus through this pain. His adrenaline is high as hell, and right now that doesn't matter. He knows he probably broke the damn arm. You can worry about that later. Just figure that out later. Right now, he needs to make sure he doesn't fall. And that's the only thing keeping Deku focused. And his arm with a steel grip on his friend's parachute. As the lantern ring does come flying down. And Deku... He does go to turn to his friend. His friend, going to someone slip as Deku, does try to hold out his arm, holding onto him further and further before the guy does get a fall. And this is where Deku, he does to throw his arm out, trying to grab at his friend as he does scream. Right on him, turning to close his eyes, trying to think about what to do, fumble with his parachute and risk theirs, try and get that one to open. However, it doesn't seem like a good idea. And as Deku, he does go close his eyes. Rano him mad at himself, feeling rage and anger. However, the rose of the lantern ring does a fly down, informing Izuku Midoriya of Earth about his ability to overcome great fear. And Deku does a bring his hand up as the ring, it does get to cover his finger. Deku flipping his hand and seeing a green lantern ring. And this it does alarm him. Deku bring his hands up as right now he is informed about what he needs to do. But Deku, he has a fly down. Him tearing through the parachute as it is moved down at high speeds. Reaching out and going to grab his friend. Before Deku, he does, going to talk about what the hell is happening. And the guy does stare at Deku alarmed. The symbol on his chest and the thing he's wearing on his face. And Deku, whenever he does go to land nearby, he does go to ask his friend if he's okay. But his friend is more worried about him. Deku, holding up the ring and talking about it. It just, it just came down. <laughs> Dude, is that a, you're, you're a green lantern. <laughs> I know. Dude, this is amazing. I I can fly. Yeah, you can fly. But wait, wait. W what else can you do? Uh, I, I don't know. The ring informing Izuku Midoriya about how he does in a report to Sector Zero for briefing and training. And Deku does look at his ring. Before he's going to ask about exactly if he can skip that, right now there's a lot going on. But the ring doesn't pull him up. Rano Deku unable to open his hand as he's ripped up into the air and dragged out into space. And his friend does sit here, 
falling backwards for a minute and trying to keep himself together. Though that, it's not possible. As looking down, he does realize one thing. He already pissed himself. And that, that's at least the worst thing that happened today. Him letting out a laugh as he's going to fall backwards, trying to be thankful about this nice landing. Though he does sit up, wondering about how to explain things to everyone else. I mean, Cindy and Karashima, they, they must have seen that. Christ. Okay, so Deku's a superhero now. Though he just got kidnapped by alien jewelry. Honestly, that that sounds about right for Izuku. Right now him sitting here. And Deku, he is shot through space. Trying to figure out where he's heading to. Where he's even going. And the ring, it does try to inform him about what's happening. Before Deku, he does look around. Seeing stars, planets, moons, asteroids. Deku even turning and seeing a blue star in the distance. However, Deku does go to open his mouth and all. Him sucking in a breath before finding that he can actually breathe out here. And this, it does intrigue him. Before the ring does inform its user about how it is oxygenating them so that they do not die in the atmospheric environments of space. And Deku is alarmed to hear that in his head. Right now him continuing to fly with the ring before he does a land on Oa in front of the Guardians. And they are quite surprised to see another young human. However, they do go to express about the current predicament. Since it does appear that there's another one. Uh, where am I? You are on Oa, young man. You are from Earth, correct? Or are we wrong? There, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm from Earth. Listen, um, today is, this is not how I expected my day to go. Um, hi. Hello. The other guardians greeting him, before asking exactly what the young man's name is. Is it Midoriya? And how did you achieve your ring? Come to become worthy of it? Worthy? Uh, I don't know. I, I've never seen this ring before today. Worthy of it? You overcame great fear. I, I just saved my friend. He was going to die. I see. That's good. A person flying down. And Deku does get the report from his ring about it being put to 300% willpower. Deku looking at his hand as the ring is pouring nothing but green energy. And his eyes, they do feel glowing. His body just feels incredibly powerful. And Deku does a turn. Right now seeing a man in a blue lantern suit. This alarming him. This Deku didn't know that green lanterns could be blue lanterns? Renault Deku turning his head and seeing a man he doesn't recognize. Though that face, the jawline, the hair. You're the green lantern. <laughs> oh, so you're the newbie from Earth, huh? Well, might as well. Him flying forwards. Bring his hand out, introducing himself as Hal Jordan. Though, he's expecting that that mask of his, he didn't expect it could come off. Hmm? Deku bring his hand up. Run right him, finding that his face is barren. And this, it does confuse him. As Hal Jordan does talk about it. Okay, how about they let him take on this, uh, kid's training? He's an earthling, so... It would probably be best for him to know what to do, especially out here. 
and the Guardians do well look at Hal Jordan before they do go to Express. That will be fine. Kilowog does have many of his own duties that he's currently attending to, along with the fact that they do currently have a team out looking for the Manhunters. And this Deku does perk up at Manhunters. Wait, Deku turning to Hal Jordan. Your Martian Manhunter? You guys are hunting him down? Oh, no, no, no. Um, Killer Robots. From outer space? Yeah, you're a little too excited at that premise. Wait. So, so this this is like some sort of club? Listen, kid, you're, you're more like a space cop. That's way cooler. Okay, listen. I get that you're excited for this. Way more than you should be. But, uh, let's... Start with basic training. How about that? You know, you're still, uh... Green. Oh, God, that was a terrible pun. Well, you get used to them. Trust me, you might want to start now, because you're going to hear a lot of them. Especially if you do meet Batman. I'm going to fly up into the air. And Deku, he does get looked down in his hand. For turning to the man who does a wave at him. When Saint Walker does give Deku a smile, Deku just staring at this man. However, Hal does a turn, bringing his hand up and making a construct around Deku, pulling him towards him, expressing about how he might not want to stare at Walker. Besides, if he's going to see aliens, this is going to be more than the first time he's going to see them. Though, right now, it's going to be just Terran only for training. And Deku... He is dragged to the area where Hal Jordan does begin Deku's education with the Lantern Ring. And that, it does have Deku highly intrigued. Since now he doesn't find himself in one place he didn't expect. Somewhere in deep space, and involved with some superheroes. And with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part. Or the next one.